proof function. Last week, basically, we, we looked at demand. We established that in a market setting, there are always two groups, sellers and buyers. And the sellers has to do with the supply and buyers has to do with the demand. And we also established that the interaction between demand and supply determines the price. So as a manager, you have to know the relation between price and quantity demand, price and supply, so that you can make informed decisions. We were left to, to go through, I think, consumer surplus when our time uh, knock us down. So today, brief, briefly, I'll take you to consumer supply so that we can attend to supply. I'm believing God for us to finish supply today. Uh, I sent you a problem set. Did you, were you able to receive it? Uh, I want to take you through that set, maybe on slide three. So that next week you can go to elasticity of demand and supply. Please, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, please. Okay. 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 So basically, we are looking at consumer supplies today, and it has to do with demand. And the supply, we will look at producer surplus. But if you get a concept in consumer surplus, that basically I think is is same same as under the producer surplus. So basically, when you get a concept of consumer surplus, that of producer surplus will not be anything. To waste time on. Don't let this diagram confuse you. I think let me share a whiteboard so that you can take it from there. But let me give you the definition of consumer surplus. A consumer surplus is a value consumer get from a good but do not pay for. When you buy a good, the value you get from that good that you don't actually pay for that value is, is what is term as consumer surplus. Or the extra value that consumer derive from a good but do not pay extra for. So you can buy two, maybe two apples, the extra benefit you derive from that apple that you don't pay for is basically what we term as consumer surplus. From this diagram, you can see that the area above the price but below the demand curve is consumer surplus. So anytime you're asked to maybe calculate and find the consumer surplus, is basically the area above the price but below the demand curve. The area above the price but below the demand curve is, is what is we term as consumer surplus. Also, what consumers pay for the item and what he was willing to pay, what consumer actually pay for an item and what he was willing to pay. So maybe he went to a supermarket wanting to buy maybe a drink, and based on your satisfaction, he wanted to pay for 10 CDs for that particular drink. But you went in and the price of the drink was five cities. So you paid five cities, but you were willing to pay 10 cities. So the difference between what you actually paid and what you were willing to pay is the consumer surplus. How can we illustrate that on the diagram? I just want to get a plain one so that you, you can get it. Let me get a whiteboard. Whiteboard. I hope you can hear me, please. I need your feedback. <laughs> okay. I hope you can hear me. Let, let's look at the diagram. So we have our demand curve. Wow. This our demand curve. Please, are you following? Are, are you following? Yes, sir. Yeah, you have this to be quantity. And you have this to be price. We are looking at consumer surplus, and we are saying basically that the area above the price but below the demand curve is consumer supply. The area above the price but below the demand curve is what we term as consumer supply. So we have our price for maybe good X, which is 
our price for good years, which is maybe cassava, to be five grand cities. Corresponding to a quantity. So let's say five Ghana cities co corresponding to a quantity of maybe five. So the price is five cities for cassava with a quantity five. Is it the total quantity to be 12? Price, the highest price to be 12. And total quantity to be nine. Please, as at the price of five cities, you are buying five quantity of cassava or quantity, okay, five quantity of maybe milk, milo at a price of five Ghana cities. Please, do you remember the concept of marginal utility or the theory of utility? Hello? Hello? Hello. Hello. Uh, do you remember the concept of marginal utility? You cannot unmute. Let me see your honor. Let me let me try to. I, I, I just want to engage you so that the concept will be clear to all of us. Who wants to talk? Let me see by answer that I can I can omit you. Okay. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Um, we remember. Uh, uh, what does the that concept say? That um, it says that as more and more. Let's let's let, let's look at the equilibrium for a single commodity case. Under marginal utility, equilibrium for a single commodity case. I said, imagine the utility of X. Do you remember this? Imagine the utility of maybe X is equal to price of X. Do you remember something like this? Yes, sir. You remember? Yes, sir. Yeah, very important. Even though we have not treated marginal utility, but we needed to understand the concept of quantum surplus. We are saying that any at, at equilibrium and the uh, marginal utility or utility, the utility you derive from the commodity should be equivalent to the price. You understand that? Please, do you get that concept right? You, you, you get, we are saying that on the, on the theory of utility, the satisfaction a consumer derived from a commodity should be equal to the price of that commodity. Yes, you know, we, we, can't, we can't quantify satisfaction, but we can maybe, you can use cardinal, cardinal approach, but let, let, let's try to maybe quantify, maybe you are getting a, a five utility for maybe consuming orange. We are saying that that utility you are getting should be equal to the price of that commodity. In other words, when your the satisfaction is derived from a given commodity is I, the price of that commodity should be I. Please, are we making sense? Yes, sir. Please, are, are you making sense? Yes, sir. Yes. Are, we, are we clear with this? Yes, sir. Okay, we are just using this concept to explain the concept of consumer surplus. So we are saying that in actual sense, the consumer is paying five Ghana cities for five quantity of maybe below. But consumer surplus is, is, is the area above the price but below the demand curve. And simply we are saying that what the consum consumer pays and what he was willing to pay, the difference is the consumer surplus. A value consumer get from a good, but do not pay for. So that is the value you want to find from this diagram. And you are saying the consumer is paying five Ghana cities for five, maybe quantity of milo. In the theory of consumer surplus, if the consumer should buy one, one maybe quantity of milo, the satisfaction he will be getting from that milo will be higher than that of the second quantity. Do you agree with me on that? Do you agree with me on that? The satisfaction the consumer is going to derive for the first maybe thing of Milo would be far, would be greater than 
the satisfaction is going to derive from the second one. Do you agree with me on that concept? Yes. Yes. No problem. Who is saying no? Did I hear no? No. So please so we said yes. I'm saying that you know we established that under the theory of utility, the satisfaction you derive from the commodity should be equal to the price of the commodity. And we also established that as more of a commodity is consumed, the satisfaction decreases. So the satisfaction you're going to derive from maybe a first, maybe orange you take is greater than that of the second orange. So the consumer should be willing to pay more for the first orange than the second one. Do you understand that concept? Yes, please. Please, do you understand me? Exactly. Yeah, the reason why I usually wait is not it's not profitable if I should move with speed and you are lacking behind you understand. That is why I usually want to. So basically, in this diagram, you are saying that the consumer is paying for five CDs, he's getting maybe five ton of Milo. But in the actual sense, the first ton of Milo, the consumer will be willing to pay higher amount to get that ton of Milo than the second one. So let's say the first ton of Milo is 10 Ghana CDs. Please, are you following? Yes, please. Yeah, so let's say the first thing of Milo is 10 Ghana cities for the first quantity. One. The second should be what? Nine or eight? What should be the second? Eight. Nine. Eight. Let me do nine. Nine. What will be the third? To... The third is. Let's see. Eight, eh? So we have this to be two, three. Mm -hmm. But the main thing we are looking at is the five. So you put this in mind, the five. This actual amount is paying and he's getting this funding. In the actual sense, the consumer was supposed to pay 10 Ghana CDs for one, Ten of Milo, nine Ghana cities for two ten of Milo, eight Ghana cities for three ten of Milo, and five Ghana cities for five ten of Milo. So, if we were to calculate the actual price the consumer was to pay to get five ten of Milo, it should be five plus eight plus nine plus ten. Do you get that concept? Hello. No. Do you get that concept? No, sir. That please Are come you? again. We are saying that I established that we, we are saying that the first thing of Milo the consumer will consume, the satisfaction it will be deriving from that commodity is higher than the second one. So the consumer should be willing to pay higher price for the first thing of Milo than the second. We are looking at the first thing of Milo and we are saying that with the theory of utility, the first thing in the, in the first thing of Milo, the consumer was supposed to pay for 10 Ghana CD for the first thing of Milo. After consuming the first thing of Milo, the satisfaction will reduce. So it will be willing to pay nine Ghana cities for the second. Willing to pay eight Ghana cities for the third. And the consumer will be willing to pay five Ghana cities for the fifth thing of Milo. Do you get that concept? Yes, yes, we yes sir. So in actual sense, if we were to calculate the, the amount of money the consumer was supposed to spend, on five ten of milo, it should be ten plus what nine plus eight. Please calculate it for me. Plus five. What will be the answer? Please, what will be the answer? Thirty-two. 32. Okay. In actual sense, the consumer was supposed to pay 32 Ghana cities for the five things of Milo. Because we are saying that the first thing he buys, because his satisfaction is high, is willing to pay for 10 Ghana cities. The second thing he buys, the satisfaction for the second one is lesser than the first one. So he's willing to pay for nine Ghana cities. The third thing the consumer buys is the same thing. 
the satisfaction for the third, the, the second is greater than the third. So the consumer will be willing to pay eight Ghana cities. So the total amount the consumer will be willing to pay, will be willing to pay for that five cents of milo is 32 Ghana cities. Please do you get that concept. Yes. yes. But in, 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 in reality, now the consumer is not paying 32 Ghana cities. He's paying five Ghana cities. And that brings the consumer surplus into the equation. He was supposed to pay 32 Ghana cities, but he's paying five Ghana cities. So we define the consumer surplus as the, the extra value the consumer derives from a good, but do not pay extra for it. Do you understand? Please, do you, do you, do you understand what I'm, I'm trying to? Please. Can we move on? So please, so maybe can for... He's paying five Ghana cities, five Ghana cities for five, five quantities. But in actual sense, he was supposed to pay 32 Ghana cities. And the, the amount he's not paying is accounting for the, the consumer surplus. Do you understand okay. the concept? Okay. Yeah. So that okay. means doesn't mean the difference between the five cities and the 32 cities is the no, no, no. I just want you to get I want you to get the intuition behind it so that we can okay. calculate the consumer surplus. Okay, so yeah. So this is the intuition behind it. The intuition it, it is implicit in a marginal utility theory. So we can now calculate the consumer surplus, right? So basically, as I said, have this in mind. Always the consumer surplus is the area below the demand curve, but above the price. Always the consumer surplus is the area below the demand curve, but above the, this is the price. The area below the demand curve, but above the price is the consumer surplus. And you can see that that area is what triangle, right? We can see that the area is triangle, right? Yes, please. Yeah, the area below the demand curve but above the, the price is triangle. So what is the formula for finding with area of a triangle? How? Oh times base times height. Our base times height, very, very important. What let's see. So now to find the consumer surplus, we are just calculating the area of the triangle. So you have ES is equal to, what is the base? This is the base, right? Or? Oh. This is the base and this is the I. The base is five minus zero, right? Yes. Are we clear? Are we are we clear on that? Are we clear on that? Yes, please. Five minus zero by the by the ice. What is the height? That is the price, right? And the height is twelve. Twelve minus what? Twelve minus five, right? Yes. You know? The height is what? Seven. 12 minus 5. Yeah, which is 7. Okay. So what will be our consumer surplus? Sorry, sorry for my writing. <laughs> God. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> what will be our consumer surplus now? I hope I'm not getting you guys, guys confused. So half times 5 times 7. 1. What will be the answer? 1. 1. 1. Negative 1. It's going to be negative. What about two times five times seven? Seventeen point five. Seventeen point five. Yeah, yeah, seventeen point five. That is our consumer surplus. Please, who doesn't understand? So always remember the area of the of the triangle that is above the price below the demand curve is the consumer surplus. Who doesn't understand? Can we move on? Yes, sir. You cannot. Sir, please go over it, please. The way my I've scattered my diagram. <laughs> okay, why don't you understand? Oh, I should go over from from beginning to. Say yes from beginning. From beginning. Yeah. <laughs> So are you able to learn? Yes. Uh, the, the, I'm not even thinking about what's happening. 
Please do you understand it? About it. No. You, right. Do you understand the intuition behind the marginal utility concept I shared with you? Madam? Hello? Please, who asked the question? Who told me to go over? Hello, sir. Yeah, do, you, do you understand the intuition I share with you with the, the concept of marginal utility? Yes, I understand it. Okay, okay. Let me take it to the maybe the slide again. Let me take it to the slide again. Okay, if I think you understand intuition, then we can use this for, for the calculation. So what we are saying is that always when you are asked to calculate for the consumer stop loss, you are looking at the area above the price below the demand curve. And I have, I think I've given you the intuition, the reason why we, we call it the consumer stop loss. What the consumer was willing to pay, the difference between what the consumer was willing to pay and what he actually paid. And I gave you the reasons why. I think I, we, we, we did that calculation. But in a diagram like this, when you're asked to calculate the consumer surplus, basically, you have to find the area of the triangle. That is the above the price, but below the demand curve. And we established that area of a triangle is half base times, times I. I think one of you gave me that formula. Half base times I. One over two times the I. We said the I is we are looking at the base. The base is the what? Is the two minus zero is the base. Two minus zero is the base. We are for, we, we said that the area of a triangle is half base times i i, and the, the the base is the change in quantity of possibly maybe the ten of milo. The change in quantity. So the base is basically the two minus zero is the base, and Five minus three is the i. So you have one over two by two minus zero is, is two. Two minus zero is two. Two minus zero is two. Please calculate for me. Two minus zero is two, and five minus three is what is two. So what to be the what to be the total loss? Two minus zero by five minus three. Which is equal to two. Did you get a concept? We are looking at, we said that the area of this triangle is just half base times i. And the base is the change in quantity. That's two minus zero. The i is five minus three, which is the i. When you calculate this area of this triangle, you get the consumer stop loss. Are we clear on that? Yes. Yes, sir. Please, I understand. Thank you. Okay. So we can move on now. Yes. So total consumer value. Total consumer value. To get the total consumer value, you calculate the area of this triangle plus the area of this rectangle. The total consumer value. The consumer is paying for this. This is what a consumer is paying for. The expenditure the consumer is paying for. But he's getting this as additional value. So the expenditure is paying for gives him value plus the Top loss is also getting gives him value. So when you talk about total consumer value, we are talking of the area of the triangle, which is the consumer surplus plus the expenditure. Are we clear on that as well? Please can you come again? 
I think no, Europe are total con are, uh, consumer value. They are total consumer value. They are saying that the total value the consumer is getting from the commodity. And you have to understand that the price is paying for that commodity is three, and it's getting a quantity of two. When you take this price and this three, it's getting a value from paying the three cities and two Ghana cities. And it's getting an additional value, extra value, which is the consumer surplus, which is the area of the triangle. So when we are asked to calculate for the total consumer value, we are looking at the summation of the area of the triangle plus the area of the rectangle. Please, do you get me? Yes, please. So the area of the rectangle is what we length and blade, right? So we have, we have three minus zero and two minus zero plus the consumer surplus. Do you get that? Please do you understand that. Please do you understand yes, that. Please. In other words, you can just calculate the expenditure. The expenditure is the amount of money the consumer is spending on the good. And the expenditure is just the price of the of the good times the number of the quantity of the goods. So if he's buying two Price of one is three cities. Price and times the two quantity is the expenditure. The amount of money is spending on the good is the same as the expenditure. So the price, the expenditure plus the consumer surplus gives us the total consumer value. Are we clear on this? So that we can move on to supply. Any question on consumer surplus? No, say. So we can move on. God bless you. Let's 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 move on to our lesson for today. Okay, so basically what, what is supply? You can just give us a brief definition of supply. We will not spend much time on supply because I think it's similar to demand. And you guys will, will explain all the determinant of supply. I will choose the easiest one. I will explain that of price and you guys will explain the added. What is supply? Okay, this is still consumer supply. Right? Hey, who is who is defining supply for us? Hello, club. Oh, you want me to define it by myself? Um, please, it is the quantity of um, goods that a producer is willing to produce. Okay, that's important. At the given price, eh? Over a given period of time. Okay, Yuma, you can talk. After Yuma Gariba, you can also talk. We will move faster with supply. Yuma. So, supply Yuma, is the goods yeah. and services that a consumer is able and willing to supply at um, a particular price or something, holding all factors equal. Producer or consumer? Producer, producer, a producer yeah. is able to um, yeah, produce. Very, very important. Basically, market supply refers to the sum of the quantities of a good that individual firms or sellers are willing and able to offer for sale over a given time period. I think last week we established that all what we are looking at is market demand and market supply. And we established that supply is, is the summation of individual supply. So we take from one, from two, from three, from four. We, so market supply refers to the sum of the quantity of a good that individual firms or sellers are willing and able to offer for sale over a given period of time. Over a given period of time. From our slide, it summarizes the relationship between the total quantity all producers are willing and able to produce at alternative prices, holding other factors affecting supply constant. So basically that is our definition of supply. The time factor is very important. It should be an, a given period of time because we established last week that quantity is a flow co concept. It changes over time. So when you're defining the concept of supply, a given period of time is very, very important. What producers are willing and able to produce 
at a particular price over a given period of time. From there, we can move on to the law of supply. And we just established that the law of supply shows that invest the positive relation, positive relation between price and quantity demanded. Positive relation between price and quantity demanded. In other words, when price increases, producers are willing to, pay, to supply more because they want money, they want more money, they want profit, they want sales. So when price of the commodity increases, as a manager, as a producer, you'll be willing to produce more of said goods. Basically, that is the law of supply. So in brief, as, as the price of a good rises, the quantity supply of that good rises, holding other things constant, holding other things affecting supply constant. As I explained, producers are willing to produce more output when the price is high than when the price is low. So that is what the supply, the law of supply is just telling us that when the price is high, producers will be willing to produce more. When the price is low, producers will be willing to produce less of such goods. Are we clear with that? Let's move on. Any question on that? Before we look at changes in quantity supply and changes in quantity, changes in supply, can we look at the determinant of supply? As I told you, I will explain one, the rest, I think I have to give it to you. And I'll take the easiest one and explain. The first determinant of <laughs> supply is price of the good in question. And that's what the, the, the law of supply states. When the price of a good is high, supply, quantity supply increases. When the price of a good is high, producers are willing to produce more of such commodities. So for example, when I'm a producer and I'm producing maybe shoe and maybe Borges oil, when the price of shoe is down and the price of Borges oil is high, I can shift from producing shoe to produce more of Borges oil because I, I am motivated by price. Yeah, this is an iPhone. So who is the manager? So, maybe one, is the number. Yeah. So Hello. that's what he likes. Who is that? <laughs> Sorry, oh, sorry. Okay, you can follow. Let's go. <laughs> so, um, my brother, you will take the nice part. The second determinant of supply, the determinant is price of certain other goods or substitute in production. How will that affect supply, quantity of supply? Is it missing? Who, is, who has been that for us? We are looking at the determinant of supply. The first one is own price or price of maybe the commodity in question. And I'm saying that when the price of that commodity increases, producers will be willing to produce more of such commodities. Yeah, the second determinant you are looking at is substitute in production or price of other goods. How does that affect supply? Who is explaining for us? One person should take that. The second one is technology and government regulations. How does technology and government regulation also affect price? Class, can you hear me? <laughs> Just share your ideas on that. I think it's good to talk in class. You when you are, we can uh, hear you. Yeah, okay, so yeah, you can hear me. What the substitute? How does that affect supply? I was trying to explain the technology and the government aspect. Substitute in production. You are taking that one. Uh, are you taking it? Okay, then let's yeah. go. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Technology and government regulation. So if you look at the technology aspects. Uh, if uh, producers are able to uh, utilize more equipment or more advanced uh, equipment or machines in production, they can increase their uh, production. In the other, yeah, right. in other ways, yeah, right. also when uh, less of those uh, equipment are being used in production, the, the production force. And talking, I love, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And talking about the, I love that. the government's regulation, government sometimes give the producers some subsidies or so, something like that. Well, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it yeah. is a, it's a sort of incentive for them to produce more. Perfect, perfect explanation. When you get more technology, we use cost in production. So technology give give the ability to producers to produce more. And when government gives tariffs. It also reduces the cost of production and 
based on that, the producer can produce. Spend it up. Spend it up. I think you can. After spend live, you might come so that you move on. Okay, so I'm trying to explain the substitute. Okay, okay. I think if the price of the substitute good increases, the commodity in question, the production of the commodity in question reduces or it falls because the substitute can replace the commodity. So if the price increases, producers would want to um, produce the substitutes more because yeah. they will gain more from the substitutes. Very, 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 important. very, very important. Very, very important. And so when you are producing, maybe beans can be used as a substitute for granite. When the price of granite increases, you can shift from the production of beans to production of granite. That, that is affecting supply. Ima, Ima, you can come in. I love, I love the way you are, you are just engaging. Ima. Hello. Yeah, you can, you can flow, let's go. Oh, I just finished talking. Oh, how many Emmanuels are there? Ah, uh, okay, your hand is still up, that's right. Oh. Yeah, your hand is still up. Okay, so I think if you get to it, we, we now have knowledge on the technology and reg government regulations, price of other related goods, that is substitute. What of number of firms? How does the number of firms? Okay, Imano Fosu, Fosu, Imano Fosu. Sir, please, sir, question. Um, sir, please, okay. um, from the law, it says if the price of the goods increases, yeah. The quantity supply also increases. Yeah. I don't get it when you say that for the substitute. If the goods increases, its quantity increases, not its substitute increase. Or what we are saying is that when you are producing beans and granite, right, and yeah. the price of granite increases, with maybe price of beans being constant, as we said, there is a positive relation between price and quantity supply. So when the yeah. price for granite increases, producers can shift factors of production to the production of granite because of the high price. You understand? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So even okay. though they were producing beans and granite, because of the price of granite increasing, they will shift the factors of production to produce more of granite. That is increasing, increasing quantity supply for granite. Okay. okay. You, you are right. Okay, you are correct. Okay. What's the so, normal? Of, yeah. I mean, uh, maybe um, increasing in price leads to an um, maybe increasing the quantity of another good, which is maybe a uh, substitute. Yeah. Okay. Are you asking a question or you are you are, you are trying hey. to? Hey. So please, I was trying to um, be sure of what we we're saying. That um, if maybe. You are talking about the increase in price and increase in quantity. Please, that mean that we like maybe increase in price of maybe beans and then because of um, changes in the prices or the, the supply of it and maybe granite, you have to, um, no, beans, you have to change to granite. Uh, what, yeah, basically what we are saying is that producers are interested in higher prices. You understand? When the price is high, they produce more. That is the law of supply. When the price is okay. high, you produce more of maybe a, a commodity. So okay. when you are producing beans and granite, you know, you can produce all of them in the same piece of land. When yeah. the price of granite increases with the price of being constant, it is wise for a producer to shift the factors of production to produce more of granite because the, the price of granite is high. So the quantity supply for granite to what increase. Do you understand? Okay. Anita, you can come in. Anita, you can speak. Spend love, I saw your hands up. Yeah, I wanted to add up, but I think it's clear now for them. Add up, add up for us. You have not spoken in that game. Add up. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to give an example. Like using the fact give, that yeah. Yeah. Um, cow and cow is used to produce meat and milk. Yeah, so okay. if, if a farmer uses um, its cow to produce meat and now the price of milk has increased, the farmer mm. will now tend to use the cow to produce milk rather than the meat because the price has increased. This, mm -hmm. this, this wisdom is from above. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Um, please, I wanted to explain the number of things. Okay, let's go. Now we are very important. Yes, Anita, um, 
Yes. Okay, let's go. So I was the one who spoke the first time. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yes. So the number of things, to my understanding, um, if the number of things increase, meaning the supply for that good will increase, and then the price of that good will fall. Very so, important. meaning that if you want to um, enter into such business, meaning the price of so the supply, you have to leave that industry or fame. Meaning, mm -hmm. yes, um, I think that's our answer. I think basically that's it. But now we are even not looking at changes in price yet. We are just looking at the relation between price and the quantity supply. You know, if we have, for example, when you come to night market and you have maybe one producer of maybe tomato, and let's take it that in, in a month, you produce about four tomatoes. When additional producer comes, maybe that producer will also produce 20. That's a piece of life. So as, as more firms come into a, a market, the supply of a particular product, product of increase. Are we clear on that? Yes, sir. Are we, yeah, yeah. So more firms, more supply. As, more, as the firms, the number of firms increases, quantity supply increases. When you do extensive analysis, what you are saying will come in. As more supply prices, it will affect price. There will be a downward tendency on price, but we have not gotten to that end yet. So let's look at the last one, price of input. Price of input. How does price of input affect quantity supply? Anita again, or your honest. Is Frida online? Is Frida the queen online? You stole my name. <laughs> price of input. How does it affect Hello, sir. supply? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir. You can speak. Yeah. Okay, so with the price of input, if the price of input increases, the number of supply will decrease because the there will be um, the number of goods that the, the producer can produce will decrease because of the increase in the price of the inputs. Very, very important. You, you are using the same income to produce a number of goods. When the price increases, your, your rare income will be affected. So you can't produce the number of goods you were producing. For yeah. So when the, when the price of input increases, the total or quantity supply falls. I hope you can move on. So we are now, we, I think the concept yeah, please is please the last one. The price of input, right? Yes, please. When, when we, you were using maybe, maybe two catalogs and all to produce maybe yam, right? And the price of maybe catalogs and all increases. You know, it will affect your income. Meaning if you were supposed to, if, if we, you were to buy maybe four catalogs, maybe last year, you can't buy that four catalogs again. Therefore, you, you may maybe resort to buying three and that will affect the total or quantity supply you're going to produce. So there's an inverse relation between price of input and quantity supply. When the price of input increases, the quantity supply of a commodity falls. Are we clear on that? Yes, sir. thank you. Yeah, because it, it, it increases the cost of production. And when the cost of production increases, you can produce more. Yeah. Okay, can we move on? Yes, please. So since, 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 we, are, since we are clear with, with the with determinant, let's look at change in supply and change in quantity supply. We did that in demand, so we don't have to waste much time on this. Change in supply and change in quantity supply. What is the difference? Who can, who can help us on that? Is Frida online? I need to store your answer. Your, your one is up, so it's free that online. <laughs> Let me disturb this more. You know my name like that. Let's look at changing quantity supply. Seven more, change. yeah, let's. Seven, sorry, I just joined, but then I have a question I wanted to ask. I have a question I wanted to ask. Um, on, on, on what? Yes, I, just, I want a question I wanted to ask in relation to quantity, demand, demand. The intercept, the slope of the line. We will use. I sent you a set of problems. Uh, I think I sent you question. Have you received that question? Hello. No. I can't hear you say. Yeah. I sent you a, a problem set. I will be solving that problem set with you on Friday. Okay. What well, is involves it? it, 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 it yeah. We are, we are we will attend to all the things we did in demand and come to supply as well. 
Ah, uh, because someone was so basically, needed. Okay, what was your what is your question again? I was asking whether the slope of the line is the same yeah. as the why is the same as variable cost. You you know we have not even gotten to the cost of production. If you are talking about demand, we have not gotten to production. I said we, are, we were talking about demand. We have not gotten to the, the theory of production at all. So these are two different things. Hello? Okay. So is it? Is it, is yeah. it we, it, they are the, different the analysis. Production on side, right? Yeah, yeah, that is on production side. And we will get there. I think that, that is oh. our fourth lecture. Uh, okay. Okay. No problem. So can, Thank can, you can we move on? Now? Yeah, welcome. So as we said, this is the same in relation with demand. Changing quantity supply. Changing only price leads to changes in quantity supply. Changing factors other than price leads to changes in supply. Are we clear on this? Oh, I should illustrate it with diagram for you guys. Do you yes. want a diagram or we can move on? Do you want a diagram? We did this in demand, you remember? Yes. I want a diagram. You want the diagram again? Okay, no problem. Let's go. But you remember we did it this in demand. Oh, you remember we did this in demand? Yeah. Yeah, it's the same application. It's the same application. Just the opposite. Just the opposite. Yeah, very important. <laughs> okay, okay. So, yeah. what are we saying? That change in quantity supply. It's a movement along the supply curve, right? That's what we said. Are you following? Are you following? Yes. It's free to online. Oh, she's missing. Frida, are you online? Quantity supply. Right, you know, we establish a direct relation or positive relation between price and quantity supply. And we are saying that when we are talking about changing quantity supply, remember this is quantity supply. Remember always this is quantity supply. So when we are talking about changing quantity supply, we are seeing a movement on the same supply curve. A movement on the same supply curve is change in quantity supply. So price P1 to KS1. Anita, are you online? Anita, oh, she's also missing. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, class? Yes, please, we can hear you. Okay, we are saying that. At this price, at this price, quantity supply is KOS1, right? When price changes to P2, what will happen? What will happen? Quantity will increase. Yeah, that is the law of supply. Producers want more money. Producers don't want more profit. So when the prices are high, they will increase supply. That is a positive relation between price and supply. So this is this is a what? Change in quantity supply. Quantity supply has changed as a result of change in price. So anytime we, 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 we are talking of changing quantity supply, we are saying a movement on the same supply chain. And it is mainly as a result of a change in price. Are we clear on that? Are we clear on that? Yes. Yeah. 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 So basically, anytime you anytime you hear the word quantity supply, quantity demand, we are just looking at price alone. A change in price will always lead to change in quantity. So change in supply, just talking about a, a movement along the same supply curve as a result of change in price. Now let's take price to be fixed. Mm. When price of input increases, what happens? Somebody explain that for us. When price of in input increases, what happens to? What happens? 
Hello? Quantity reduce. Supply reduce. Perfect. Very important. In other words, price is co constant, but the price of input has increased. Quantity will reduce maybe from KOS1 to KOS0. Are we okay on that? Sir, please. Are you okay on that? We are saying that, you see, we, we just, we first explained the, the change in quantity supply. And we are saying that it is a movement along the same supply curve. And it, it is as a result of change in price. It's a, a result, mainly change in price. We are now moving to change in supply. The first one was change in quantity su supply. We are now looking at change in supply. And change in supply is either a shift, inward shift or outward shift of the supply curve. And we are holding price to be constant. And now we are saying that price of input has reduced, increased. When price of input increased, quantity supply will fall. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. And you know, you know yes, the, the su supply curve is an intersection of between price and demand. Supply curve is an intersection between price and quantity supply. So we have a new supply curve here. Touching. Are you clear with this? Yes. So this is change in supply as a result of a change in price of input. When price of input falls, price being constant, what will happen to quantity supply? It will increase, right? Yes. Price of input for quantity supply will increase. Maybe mm, to yes. Price is constant. So we have a change in a change in what? A change in supply again. A shift, a shift in the supply curve is, is a change in supply. A movement on the supply curve is a change in quantity of supply. And change in change in supply is always affected by any other determinant of supply other than price. Right? Change in price only has to do with change in quantity of supply. All other the, 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 the determinant of supply causes change in supply, either an inward shift or outward shift of the supply curve. Are we clear with that? I hope you are clear with this analysis. Yes, please. Yes. Any question? Any question so that we can, we can move on? Then I think we can move on. Let's speed up small. We have limited. I want to finish supply chain. Apply with quantity demand and quantity supply. Yes, the same diagram. The same diagram. This is the change in supply. This is the change in supply. Okay. We have looked at the demand with determinant of supply. Okay, okay, okay. Let's look at taxes. Mm. I think we, we 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 didn't explain the taxes, right? No, okay. Or oh, oh, you are clear with that so that we can we can move on. Are you clear with the taxes? No. No, you can explain. Okay, what is yes. size tax? Tax on each unit of output sold. So we, when you are you are selling maybe 10 bags of cement, size tax will put tax on each unit of the of the of the cement. You understand that? So usually it is calculated based on the number of units of maybe quantity you are selling. Each of the quantities is taxed. And you have ad valorem tax. And this tax is a progressive tax. The more quantity you produce, the more you are taxed. So an excise tax is a tax on each unit of output sold. Where the tax revenue is collected by the supplier. It's a tax on each unit of output sold where the tax revenue is collected by the supplier. It shifts the supply curve up by the amount of the tax. It's, it's very important, put this statement now. It shifts the supply curve up by the amount of the tax. Ad valorem tax literally means according to value, according to value. As more value is added, the tax is increased. It's a percentage tax and it is higher for price items. Higher price item. When the price of a commodity is high, ad valorem tax is very high. For example, if price, if we there is a tax on one Ghana city. Maybe you are taxing one Ghana city. Okay, let me write it for you guys to understand. 
Maybe a good is, let's say a good is one Ghana cities, right? Hello? Say Hello? Hi. A good, Hi. A, a good is 10, one Ghana cities, and we are taxing that good maybe 10%. What would be the amount after tax? 1.0, 1.10, or? Or? The, the price of the good is one city, and we are taxing that good 10%. After the tax, the price will be 1.10. Are we good to go? Yes. Are we good to go? Sir, please. Please do you understand. Yes, Make it clear for us, please. We, we are saying that a good, maybe a good is one Ghana city, and the tax rate is 10 Ghana city. So if we are to tax this good, 10 Ghana, you just divide 10 by ended plus one which will be 1.10. So the price of the good after the tax will be 1.10. Please do you understand? So you said one over 100 times one. 10 over, 10 over 100 plus one, plus the price of the, of the, of the, of the good. Oh, okay. And for example, the same, let's say the, the same tax on another product and the product price is 20 Ghana City. Product price is 20 Ghana City. What will be the tax, tax rate? A product of 20 Ghana cities. What will be the tax? 10%. Who is calculating for us? Hello? Okay, you let's go. You get it. I, I'm, I'm to explain it with you with diagrams as well. So you let's go. But I hope you get the concept of the SS tax. You you understand? You will explain how the tax the, the diagram as well. Are you clear on that? Please, are you clear on that? Yeah. Sir, please, the SI tax. We're seeing something that we should jot it down. I said that <laughs> it's a tax on each unit of output sold, where the tax revenue is collected by the supplier. It shifts the supply curve up by the amount of the tax. So it shifts the supply curve up by the exact amount of the tax. So this is size tax. It's a tax of 20 Ghana, 20 CD. Shift the supply curve upward at the same amount of the tax. Are you clear with that? So the distance between this and this is the tax, 20 city. Please, are, are you okay with that? Yes, please. Okay, let's look at the add volume tax. Why is this curve not straight? Why is this curve tilting? When you move out, out, outward, the space between the tax increases. Please, do you understand this concept? Hello? No, sir. We are Say saying no. that with the ad valorem tax, literally means that according to value, as more value is added, the tax increases. It's a progressive tax, tax rate. It's a percentage tax, and it's higher for high price items. When the price of a commodity is high, the tax on it is very high. For this type of tax. So let's take, for example, at a price of 1,100 cities. Please, are you following? Are you following? At a price of 1,100 cities. Quantity. At, at, at a quantity of 1,100 cities, the price was 10 Ghana cities, right? Yes. And at a quantity of 2,450, the price was 20 Ghana cities. And we added ad variant tax to the first quantity. What was the amount of the tax? One city, 20 pesos, right? Yes. Hello. When we, now nah, it was 20 pesos. When we added the 20 pesos to that of the 10, we had 12. 
Pedro, só dá Alex. Vocês viram as câmeras? Hello? Hello? Hi. Yes, sir. You we can understand? hear you, yes. So you can hear yeah. me, please go over. I should go over, right? Yes, sir. Yes, please go over. Okay, okay, perfect. Quantity of 1,000, 100 Ghana cities. With a price of ten dollars, let, let let us calculate twenty percent of tax uh, on this. What are you going to get? Twenty percent of tax on ten ten dollars. Please, who is doing that calculation for us? Twenty percent of two dollars. Yeah, two dollars. <laughs> Be. It's twenty percent, right? We calculated twenty percent, and we have two dollars. Yes. When the tax was added, we moved from ten dollars to twelve. That is the two plus the ten. You understand? Yes. So, in a quantity of one thousand one hundred, at a price of ten cities, twenty percent tax on the ten cities gave us four cities. In other words, we are paying four cities for a good. We are supposed to pay ten Ghana cities because of the tax. So the tax margin was two cities for 1,100 quantity goods. You, you, you understand the concept? Yes. Please, you understand? Yes. Now, let's calculate 20% for 20 Ghana cities. 20% for 20 Ghana cities. It's four cities. Four dollars. Four cities. Yeah, so four plus 20 is now 24. So the same percentage of tax, but as the goods increases, as the price increases, the tax margin component increases. Do you get it? Yes, yes. So even, even though 10 cities pay 20%, 20 cities pay 20%, the margin for 20 cities is higher than that of 10 Ghana cities. Are we clear on that? Yes. Okay, we can move on now. So now let's look at the supply function. I think this is similar to that of the demand. And it is similar. And he said the supply function for a good X is a mathematical representation describing many units that will be produced at different prices for X. Price of input W, price of technological related goods, and other factors affecting supply. So they were just telling us that the quantity supply of a good depends on all determinants of supply. Not only price, it depends on price of input, price of substitute, technological change, government regulations. Now the quantity supply of a good depends on, on all these things. Basically that's the supply function. Okay. I hope we, we, we explained this last, last week, right? Who can explain this for us? Who can, who can take us through this? We did this in demand. It's the same interpretation. Nothing has changed. Who is, who, 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 who is going to do that for us? The interpretation. Like, one. All of them, all the variables in the equation. Uh, the B not is what? This is what? Autonomous when? This is what? It's called the intercept, right? Yeah. This is, this, this is the intercept. Yes. Yeah, the, the value of quantity supply when all other determinants are zero. Exactly. You understand? Yes. This is called the intercept. The value, or you can also, some also call it autonomous variables. It doesn't depend on the determinant of the part. In other words, when all the determinants are zero, producer may still produce maybe some quantity. It doesn't depend on all these things. Possibly it will produce what he's going to eat. Do you understand? Yes. So anytime you see, you see a variable like this with no variable before or after it, we call it intercept. The second is, this is called parameter. Some people call it the same as slope or gradient. 
It, it measures the impact of good X, the price of good X on quantity supply. So when quantity supply, maybe price of good X changes by a unit, quantity supply will change by the BX. Do you get it? Do you understand? Hello? Sir, please, no, that's one go over. Let it go over. You understand the intercept, right? Yes, please. This is called the parameter, the gradient, or the slope. It measures the impact of price of good X on quantity supply. In interpreting this, you just basically when price of good X changes by one unit, quantity supply changes by BX. So all the Bs are parameters gradient or slope, they are the same. And it measures the impact of a change in the explanatory variable on the dependent variable, so wait. Do you get a concept? This is very important. In your lectures, you manage a course, most of the questions will be coming from this. Interpret this, interpret, oh, those are the important things. And, and the positive sign usually measure the relationship. Uh, the relationship between this variable and the quantity supply. When it's positive, meaning it's a direct relation. When this increase by a unit, this will increase. When it's negative, when this increase by a unit, this will decrease. So the coefficient of the parameters measure the direction or the correlation of the relationship. Please do you understand that? Hello? So maybe when um, you use it to solve something, maybe we'll get it. Okay, we will solve the question maybe on Friday. So we can move on now. Or any question on this? If no, we can move on. Okay. Okay, I think that, that's the same thing. The science and magnitude of B coefficient determine the impact of each variable on the number of units of X produced. Yeah, so BX measures the impact of PX on its quantity supply. But I think dx is greater than zero by the law of supply. In other words, when price increases, quantity supply will increase. That is dx is positive. This is positive, meaning there's a direct relation. When px increases, quantity supply increases. And they are telling us that bw is negative. In other words, when price of input increases, quantity supply will fall. There is an inverse relation between quantity supply and price of input. When the price of input increases, quantity supply will fall. Technology is positive. The parameter for technology, in other words, when technology is improved, there is a lower cost of production, causing quantity supply to increase. Are we clear on that? Could you come again, please? Sorry. For, for the train, I, I think I explained to you that the coefficient that is the positive and the negative sign, measure the direction of, direction of the relationship. Yes. When the coefficient is positive, meaning the relationship is direct. In other words, yes. when dx increased by a unit, ks also increased by that, 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 that angle in that direction. And from, from the supply analysis, we are saying that this is price of input. You understand? When okay. price of, and we are saying there is a negative relation between price of input and quantity supply. If price of input increases, quantity supply will fall. That is, oh, yeah, negative relation. Third, we are saying technology has a positive relation with quantity supply. In other words, when we improve on technology, there will be a lower cost of production, causing quantity yes. supply to increase. Are you clear on that? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. That's very nice. Okay. Okay, so we have a question. Somebody should do this for us. Is just about what your research department estimate that the supply function for television set is given by this is quantity supply 2000 is the in intercept, three is the parameter. In other words, when price is changed by one unit, quantity supply will change by three units. When PX is changed by a unit, quantity supply will change by three units. In a question like that, they have given us the prices 
all the variables. So if you have to calculate the quantities of y, you just have to insert the variable. Please, what is the variable for Px? The Px is what? $400. And here is 100. Yes. Dw is 2,000. When you compute it, what, what will be the quantities of y? A minute, please. Minus. Can you do, do, do that for us? When you compute it, what will be the quantities One of y? 1,100. 1,100, yeah. Qu quantity supply? Yes, please. Check the calculation again. 2,000 plus 3 into brackets, 400 2, minus. Yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. minus. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Take 800. 800, yeah, that's it. 800. Okay. Another quantity supply, given all this will be 800. And mind you, when price changes by a unit, quantity supply will change by what? By what? Adam. When price changes by a unit, quantity supply will change by what? Three. When price changes by units, three. Uh, yeah, quantity supply will change by three. Very, very important. Yes. And when pri price of maybe inputs increases by a unit, quantity supply will decrease by four. Four. Yeah, decrease. Oh. So the negative is just telling us that it will decrease positive. I hope we can move on. Are you clear with this? Yes. Okay. Please. Let's look at inverse supply function. We did this last week as well under demand. We, we, we are saying that, you know, when you are giving a supply function, quantity supply is a function of price. You know that in this function, quantity demand, quantity supply is a dependent variable and price is the independent variable. When you are asked to find the inverse supply function, you just have to make price the subject. In other words, you express quantity supply as a function of price. Hello? Do you, you, you understand? Yes, Sir, please. No. What we are saying is that when you are asked to find an inverse supply function, we always give you the supply function in this format, where quantity supply depends on price. Okay? We are saying that quantity supply is dependent variable and the price is the independent variable. When you're asked to find the inverse, you just have to make the price PX the subject to get the inverse supply function. You understand? Please, do you understand? Yes, yes. Do, do you get it? Yeah. So we just make the price. The reason why we are making the price the subject is that we want to plot the supply curve. And in plotting the supply curve, we can't use this to plot the supply curve. Why? Because we need the slope of the curve. And when we make the price the subject from the, from the normal supply curve, we get the inverse. And the slope of the KOX, the quantity supply, is the slope of the curve. But when you are using the normal supply equation function, we can't get the slope. Do you understand? So for us to get the slope of the supply curve, you have to make price a subject. When you make price a subject, one over three becomes the slope of the supply function or the supply curve rather, sorry, the slope of the supply curve. Are you, are you, are you clear with that? Hello? Hello, class? Hi, yes, please. Are you, are you, are you clear with that? Or I should, yeah, I should, I should, I should, I should use the whiteboard to illustrate it for you. Please, that will be okay. Okay, let me, let me, let me. please capture capture the, the equation for me. <laughs> so you please said, be, I want to use the right one. Okay, hey, I didn't put in the you capture some formula. Now, nah, the equation, I think, maybe I went to use the equation. Uh. We said that the, the, the question was KOX what? KOX or is equal to what? 33px. Is it 2000 plus 3px? Hey. Minus 400. Minus 400. Then. Someone was saying different, you know. 2000 plus 3px. That was the equation. Please, was that an equation? I saw four. Yes, 
It's 2000. Mm. I don't know. I don't believe it. Right. It's hey. Yes, Who wants to confuse me like that? <laughs> so this is the equation, right? Am I right? Okay, minus 400. Minus 400. Yeah. This is the equation. Hello? The 100 is negated. Mm-hmm. Like that. And this is positive. Plus. Are we good to go now? You know, this is a normal supply function. And we express quantity supply as a dependent variable. We are just saying that quantity supply depends on price. In other words, a change in price will affect quantity supply. Are we good on that? But before we can, before we can plot the supply curve, we have to find the, hello? Before we can plot the supply curve, we, we have to get the inverse function. And in this the inverse supply function, we make okay. the, the subject. Hello? So in making P as a subject, you have three PX. Is equal to 400 plus QX. Are you good to go? So minus Q is always plus. It should be positive. Where 400 is negative. Yes, please. So are, are you clear on that? Okay. So PX, PX becomes what? 400 divided by three, right? What is 400 divided by three? Yes, please. We can choose to divide it. Uh, please, the QS, then the PS should be minus O. No, 400 is negative. The 400 is negative, so. It's crossed to the other side. Yeah, the 400 crossed to the other, the other side becomes positive. Positive. Are you clear on that? So there's the inverse. Supply function. No, say. You understand? Say no. Yes. Yeah, one of them is supposed to be negative, and the negative is not there. Four, 400 is negative. 400 was okay. negative here. Yes. Okay. But when it crossed, the cosine became positive. Okay. Okay. You, you are clear now? Yes. I didn't see the negative there, sorry. Uh, I, I, I decided to confuse you. PX. <laughs> PX. So this is the inverse supply function. You understand? Hello? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, from this, we can draw our supply curve. And we know supply curve, we have price and what? Quantity. Yes. Yeah. From this, who can, who can, who can, how do you draw a supply curve from this? I think last week I took you through. Who can assist us? Hello? That, that price will be the y axis and us will be the px will be the y axis and qs will be the x axis. Uh, from there, what are you what are you going to do again? Um 400 over there is the y intercept. So I think you should be drawn somewhere on the px. You know oh, when when a point, when when a point is on this line, are you following? Yes, sir. when a point yes, sir. is on this line, it's just teaching us that price is zero. Okay. Mm-hmm. And when a point yes. is on this, when a point is on this line, it's just telling us that quantity of price is zero. Exactly. You understand? Yes. You understand? So yes, when when quantity of price is zero, what would you call to price? Four hundred divided by three. Or well, yes, I'll do. yes, please. Yeah. So we have four hundred over three years. And when price is equal to zero, what would be QX? When, when price, price is equal to zero, yeah. For that one, you have to solve. You have to solve it, yeah. Yeah. So P equal to zero, it will be one. 
Zero. Somebody should solve it for us. Zero is equal to four, four and then 400 over three, right? Yes, please. Over three. Somebody should solve it for us. I'm finding this one right here. The answer is 400. Is it? Yeah, the answer is 400. The answer is 400. 400. Minus 400. How can it be? Can't you supply? Can't be manual. So. <laughs> <laughs> Quite of like I don't Okay. So in drawing your curve, we just have to equate price to zero, find for KOS, equate QS to zero and find QS to zero and find for price. That is how sorry, 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 sorry. You know, I'm running the concept of demand. Sorry, 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 sorry. So the minus is correct. Yeah, now demand is what the manual. You calculate, calculate this for us. I think the calculation is very important. So when you calculate, you get minus 400, but your concept is wrong. I'm coming. I'm coming. Let me explain it to you. All this while, the concept of demand is what is running through my mind. <laughs> okay. So when price is zero, what did you get? Hello? 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 Yes, sir. Yes. When we equate price to zero, what do you get? 400 over 3, right? 400 over 3, oh. When you equate what to what? Price is when we equate price to zero, what did you get? 400 over 3. Uh, yeah, that is that is that is the price. That is the price. And when you equate KOS to zero, what did you get? Please do the calculation for me, Maya. So me, I'm confused. When you equate price to zero, you don't get four hundred over three for the quantity. I think I have to solve it with you guys. Do you get a concept I'm trying to get? No. You don't get a concept? No, nah, it's not about the answer. Getting a concept is even far important than you getting the answer. And I'm asking a concept. What was the inverse demand function? Give me the inverse demand function. It's P x equals to minus 400 over 3 plus Q 1 over 3. I thought we are doing supply, and you said they should give you the demand function. Sorry, I'm talking of supply. Supply function. Okay, wait. <laughs> give it, give it. Okay, what is it? Is it PS as well? PX is equal to minus 400 over 3. The inverse supply function, rather. It was 400 over 3. Was it negative or? It was positive. Was it negative or positive? Yeah, it was positive. Yeah, over three. Plus what? Plus one over three QX. Oh. Yeah, one over three. Yes, please. One over three QX. Uh, so, Madam, follow for me. I think I was just interchanging the concept of demand and supply like that. You know, you can divide the two. So when PX is zero, now 400 over 30. We are finding for QS, right? QS. We have one over three. <laughs> sorry, sorry. This fraction got a time switch. Well, is that QS is what? What do you get for QX? Hello? 
चलाओ
So basically, equivalent price is determined by the interaction between supply and demand. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with that? Yes. Okay. Yes, please. We can move on. We are looking at, and I was asking a question. When you enter your room and somebody said, maybe look at the ceiling, what does it mean? The ceiling. What is the name of the ceiling? Uh, ceiling. Uh, I think that would be the last, uh, la, la, last concept we are going to discuss. What of floor? The floor is down. Eh? Yes, floor is down. Yes, please. Okay. So basically, at the clip, when we are saying that, you know, on the curve, we said at this point, at this point, supply is equal to demand. And I think I established with you when doing the demand that we can represent demand on a curve, on an equation, and also on a schedule. So at this point, where supply is equal to demand on this diagram can be also represented in an equation form. So at the point of equilibrium, we have to know that at that point, supply is equal to demand. Lisa, are we okay with that concept? So in this situation, I'm just looking at a market where demand and supply maybe are equilibrium. So if you are given a demand function and supply function, and you are asked to calculate for maybe equilibrium price, you just have to equate the two functions, make P the subject. After making P the subject, you substitute P into any of the functions, you get a quantity demand. Are we okay on that? Yes. Oh, I should. Yes, sir. Work this one as well. But we can move on. Yes, yes we can move on. Yes, sir, we okay. can move on. Okay. So in a competitive market, price and quantity freely adjust to the forces of demand and supply. That's what I was explaining. When supply is higher than demand, there is a top loss. And there will be a downward tendency on price to fall to the equilibrium. So the market adjusts itself. The market, the, the market itself adjusts itself. When supply is more than demand, meaning price will automatically fall to the place of equilibrium once again. And we've come to the concept of price ceiling and price floor again. I think somebody was explaining the way ceiling for us. What is ceiling? Yes, you said, you said when we come to the room, the ceiling is yes. the one at the top and the floor is down. Okay, so the ceiling is at the top, eh? meaning when, when you hit the ceiling, you can't go again, or the yeah. ceiling will prevent you from go, go, going, maybe. When rapture should come and we are going to heaven, can the ceiling prevent us from going? <laughs> 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 but basically, if we're in this mortal body, the ceiling will prevent you from going up. So price ceiling is when a government imposes limit on, on how high a price can be charged. Price ceiling is when a government imposes limits on, on, on how high a price can be charged. In other words, you can't go higher again. That is the maximum price you can, you can go to. You can't go higher than that price again. That is why it's ceiling. It prevents you from going higher. Please, do you get the concept? Yes, please. And pr price floor is the opposite. Government imposes limit on how low a price can be charged. Yes, In other words, when, when, you, when you enter your room, you can't go down again. The floor will prevent you from going down. So the price floor is basically when government impose limit on how low a price can be charged. Generally, it's above equilibrium price. Generally, the price floor is above equilibrium, equilibrium price. And it's the same as the minimum price that buyers are expected to buy for a product. Price floor, a minimum price that buyers are expected to buy, to pay for, to pay for a product. Let's look at that on, okay, 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 okay. So we are still using the equation. Consider a market with demand and supply function respectively. We have the demand function to be 10 minus 2p and supply function to be KOS minus 2p. Suppose a $1.50 price ceiling is imposed on the market. 
when a price ceiling is imposed, you have to add it to the, both the demand and supply curve. When you add it to the demand and supply curve and you find the difference, you will know whether it's a surplus or a, 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 a shortage. So I think we can solve this one. Let me take you through this. Or oh, we are good to go. Hello? Hello, sir. Yeah, so we just substitute the, the price of, the price ceiling into the demand equation. And I think when they say they are seven, right? So from here, you can see that quantity demand is more than quantity supply. When quantity demand is more than quantity supply, what happens? Uh, price so goes. There, there is shortage. Yeah, basically, you have to have that at your way. When quantity demand is more than quantity supply, there is shortage. And always, price ceiling leads to shortage. In other words, government has imposed restriction on the prices producers can charge. And usually, it is, it is below the equivalent price. In other words, consumer, maybe consumers were, were supposed to pay for five Ghana cities, but because of price ceiling, they are paying for three Ghana cities. And they, it's, meaning automatically, they, 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 they will buy all the goods and there will be shortage. Because they, they, are, they are buying the good at, at a lower price. So anytime there is price ceiling, there is shortage. So do you understand? Yes. And what would be the opposite? Price for anytime there's price price for there will be what surplus. There will be surplus. Yeah, I think that's the opposite. And when you do the same calculation, this is what price flow and the surplus. So when you're giving a value, I think you understand this better on Friday. I, I've set some po I sent some problem sets to, to you guys. You go through on, on okay. Friday. I believe you, you're having that problem set. Yeah, we have received it. Okay, so now let's look at a change in, change in supply and demand. Change in supply and demand. Are you going to use the whiteboard? If I should go to the whiteboard, can you remember this information? Can you capture this information for us? So that we can go there and do all this on the whiteboard. Hello? Yes. Can you capture this information for us so that we can go to the whiteboard and do all this there? Or we, we should just do a real analysis of this. Yes. Thing. You've captured We've it. Captured it. Okay, yes. let's, go, let's go to the whiteboard. Okay, the first thing we are looking at, a change in demand eh, with supply being faced, what will happen? So we have our equilibrium price, equilibrium with demand. This is quantity demand. This is quantity supply. Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi. Let's look at a change, a shift. What will cause a shift in the demand curve? What will cause a shift in the demand curve? Hello, class. So I think changes in the conditions of demand. Other changes factors the apart from the price. Very, very apart from the price, yeah. Other factors. Any other, so give me one of the factors. Price of related. In the condition. Yeah, okay. Okay. 
So price of related commodity, future expectation can all shift the demand curve. Okay. So let's take one particular example of that. Which one should we take? You can take uh, a increased number of consumers in that particular. Okay, when the number of population increase, it will yes, cause the yes, demand curve to, to shift, shift out, outward, right? Yes. So when quantity, when demand curve shifts outward, what happens to quantity? Quantity increases. And also happen to what? What will happen to the equilibrium price? It will increase. It will increase as well. So when the demand curve shifts outward, quantity will increase and price also in, increases. Do you understand that concept? Yes. Yeah. What of shifting the what if the demand can shift inward? I think the opposite will be the price will both reduce what, and quantity will reduce. Will fall, quantity will fall. Yeah. So there's an analysis change in demand holding supply con constant. Change in demand holding supply con constant. When demand shifts outward, when demand Shift outward with supply being constant, price increases, demand also, quantity demand also increases. Are we good on that? Yes, yes. Are you okay on that? Yes, please. What, what will cause this to happen? What will cause this? What can cause this to happen? Does it cause what to happen? Cause yeah, yeah, such analysis will happen where there, there is a shift in demand, increasing price. You know, anytime demand is higher than supply, price increases. Anytime demand is higher than supply, we establish that there will be shortage, right? Hello? Yes, in price. Uh, we establish that yes. it, yeah, there will be shortage. Yes, Causing an upward tendency on price. So at this situation, exactly. we are saying that demand has moved from year to year, but supply is still here. Meaning if you should measure year against year, there will be a shortage. Therefore, the price has to move as well for us to be in a global making. Okay. Please do you understand. Yes, sir. Yes. I think now we can look at a shift in supply holding demand constant. Okay, so with the question you were asking that why technology will cause that to happen. Is it because um, the technology will cause, how do you call it, the cost of production to be low, so supply, so the price will not increase. That's why supplies will be stable and the quantity demanded will increase. We, we didn't even factor in supply. We only looked at demand. So for example, okay. we are saying that population in an area has increased. When population in an area increases, you know the people there will be more than the food available. Exactly. There, will be, there will be a shortage. And anytime there is shortage, price will increase. So the okay. reason why we are, we, are, we are seeing an increase in price when the demand kept shipped outward, it's just telling us that there was shortage, causing price of commodity to increase. So when the demand kept shipped outward, supply being constant, you have to know that price will increase, quantity demand will increase. The reason why quantity demand will increase is that suppliers always want to produce more when the price is high. You understand? Yeah. So when 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 the demand has shifted out outward, demand is now more than supply. The suppliers want to take advantage of that difference, so they produce more because of an increase in price, causing quantity to increase as well. Are we clear on that? Yes, thank you. Okay, but I think this one when you see that yeah, you can do a lot of analysis on that. So now let's change. Let's see a change in supply. Holding demand constant. When price of input, input of maybe production increases, what will happen to supply? Will it shift inward or outward? When well, price of what? Price of input of production. Yes. Increases. If it's leftward it's or shift. Inward. 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 
here or the other side. <laughs> yeah. When when price of input increases, the supply can will shift leftward. You understand? Or up yes. Yeah. Do you understand? Please inward, it. inward. Why? Hello? Yes, sir. A shift, okay. to the, a, a shift to the left is a decrease in supply. A shift to the right is an increase in supply. Have this in mind. Do you understand that? Yes, please. A shift to the left is decrease in supply. A shift to the right is increase. So when input prices increases, supply of force, shifting the supply curve leftward. Please, are you talking it? about the supply? Then, are you talking about the supply? Yes, please. And if it shifts to the left, won't the supply decrease? That is analysis you are making. This is the old one, right? Please, are you following? Yes, yes We are saying that at this, this was the equilibrium price, right? And price of input increases. And we know that when price of input increases, producers will produce less because cost, cost of production will be high. Causing the to shift to the left. So we see. Hello? Sir, we can hear you. Yeah. I think we've, we've turned the analysis as well down like that. We see supply shifting to the left. Inward, yeah. You were confused. Yeah. As, a, as a result of, so this would be a decrease in the price of input, rather. Hello? Yes. Yes. Are we are we on the same page? So this yes. is a decrease in input. A decrease in the price of input. Input. Yes. Yeah. This change you just have to be definitely clear. So the price of input falls, supply will shift to the left. And here we see quantity supply increase in price falling. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay, lastly, I think let's see with simultaneous change in the two. Where maybe oh, there's a shift in maybe all the two. Please, any question on this? Please, any question? No, sir. Okay. Lastly, let's look at a simultaneous shift. So we are now looking at a shift in the demand and, and the supply. Sorry for the case. <laughs> when price of input decreases, what happened to the supply chain? Hello? Hello? Hello. So you said when the price of what? Input decreases. What happened to the supply chain? Supply will increase. Shift out of right. Decrease. The shift out of right. Yes. Yes. Are you okay with that? Yes, please. So we are, saying, yes, we are saying that input price has fallen. More will be produced. Are you okay with that? Yes. So did I get you right by saying um, price of input will decrease? Price of what? Inputs. Please, will it decrease or increase? What did you say? Please repeat. We, we are saying that price of input has decreased. Okay. And that is shifting the supply of output. In other words, when price of input decreases, cost of production will be low. Suppliers or producers will produce more. Please do you understand it. 
Yes. And we we are also saying that maybe demand curve. What will cause the demand curve to shift outward? What will cause the demand curve to shift outward? When price is low. Now nah, shift of the demand curve. You know, we said price demand curve. population increase. Income population. increases. Income increase or population. I think first we use population. So let's use a population. So there's also a shift, a shift in the demand curve from D0 to G1. And it's a, as a result of population increase. So we see supply in, increasing because of decrease in output. And we see population increase, causing demand to shift outward. This is our new equilibrium. So when the two, all the two change simultaneously, what happens? Price will increase, quantity will increase. Are we good to go on that? Yeah. So when both supply and demand changes in the same direction, in the same positive direction, quantity will change by that same direction and price will change by that same direction. The opposite is true. When supply decreases and demand decreases, price will fall, quantity will fall. Please, are we, are we good on that? Yes. Okay. Any question? So that, any question? Can we turn it? So I have to wrap up. I have to wrap up. So that will allow you to. I have to wrap up. Please, are you, are you clear on that? Yes. Sir. So this, this are just what we were doing. This are, yeah, this are what we were doing. This are what we were doing. Then we are, we are, we are having that. Simultaneous changes. So in your free time, you can be drawing and looking at the analysis. Diagrams don't lie. Diagrams don't lie. When you draw them, the interpretation will be clear. So we are done for lecture two. Any question, any feedback, anything you think I have to maybe work on, any changes you think I have to make? Please, we are done for today. Uh, we are done for today. Yeah, our time is even up. Any changes? To, yeah, somebody was saying the right name. Yeah, except Hello. that you are using, you are using something. It was street. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So I should, I should, I should be maintaining that thing. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I will do that. You, what again? Yeah, I think. We Hello? Yeah. But I hope we, we had a nice time today. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, we did. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Yeah, I think the communication didn't go around. I'm not hearing you, please. People didn't know that the class has been changed. So a lot of them. Uh, okay, okay. You see, when 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 we solve the problem set, you will cover most of those things again. Okay. And so I, I believe those who couldn't join, we will make time and explain it to them better then. Okay. okay. Uh, thanks, thanks for your comportment and everything. God bless you. So we will meet on Friday. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.